Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University and today's task is to take this intermediate bolt container and turn it into an agitation tank if possible. Now I found a place where we can get these things for about 45 bucks. That's motor oil, brand new motor oil. I'm going to have to get all that drained out of there and then wash it out thoroughly. Should be easy to do with a little dish soap and a, uh, a broom and a hose. And then the idea is to put this manifold in the bottom. And the idea is something like this, but in the bottom, so that these jets will stir everything up. We have a standpipe. In the long run, we're going to use a um, submersible pump. But to make sure we buy the right one, currently we have this trash pump in good condition. So I'm just going to plumb it in and we will uh, run it at idle and see what we get. First step is just put some water in here and the next step will be uh, add some um, solids to it see how that works and then that trash pump has an aluminum housing which will not stand up well to the hydroxides in the solution potentially so We'll get a, a plastic sump pump and we can drop it through this same hole here. I also need to plumb in my dust entry, which will go over here somewhere. And this whole thing is going to go over here and We'll have three tanks here, agitation tank, pregnant, and barren. I haven't completely decided exactly what sequence I'm going to do this in. And you can see I'm building a berm here. This will be on a sheet of plastic. And there's a low spot here that will drain into the pad because as sure as the sun rises, sooner or later, there will be a leak, a spill, or something, and you don't want to be losing gold, solution, potentially contaminating groundwater, although with this stuff I don't see too much of that happening. And uh, let me start putting everything together and see how much I can get done today. And now I want to show you something else I observed and worked on the last couple of days. This is where I dump the wheelbarrows and this is where the coarser sand settles and so when it's had a chance for the slimes to settle out over here I dig the coarse sand that I need for bedding all this area here has selectively come from this spot here but then, I have this hole, and it's in the coarse sand. We have time, and the slime settle to the bottom here. And see how the solution, the fairly clean stuff, kind of works its way over here, and then gets filtered down into the bed fairly quickly. It seems to work pretty darn well by letting it settle and then essentially letting it auto skim the surface. You can see a little bit of movement around here just from the wind, but on the whole, there's a slight current coming this direction. See it in there? And uh, that's because this is settling and filtering, and this is clear enough. But it's not really plugging that up. 
So that's, I'm going to do that on a larger basis once I get the big tank here. The idea will be to dump the bottom part of the charge right here, then stop, move the hose over here, and dump the rest of the charge in the designated slimes area, let it settle, then just cut a little ditch in the, the berm there. And then all this is slimes that have been skimmed off once this uh, solution pretty much either soaks in or auto skims itself off. Then there's this fairly thick mud, probably 50-60% solid, something like that. You know, Matt, I just scrape off and pile up. I know there's got to be a fair amount of uh, gold still in there. If nothing else, it's, it's probably all dissolved, but it's in the solution. But the pore space is uh, like 100% filled with solution there. So I may have to come back and do some recovery on that. We'll see. I don't think there's going to be enough percolation to allow me to uh, just sprinkle on the top and let it wash through. We'll be doing some testing, but those slimes, that's the pain in the butt in terms of the pad. In terms of leaching, that's the easy stuff because that, that, that gold is dissolved really quick on that. So anyhow, let me get back to the, uh, the tank and see what happens. I'd like to get it done today. Okay, so the uh, IBC is in place. There's the outlet right onto the pad. Got the manifold ready to install. Now I put these on. It's just a little wrap of uh, um, the uh, tarp. The idea is this is going to tend to be buried under sand when the agitation stops. We want to be able to restart it. And so by having this as the sand settles, it'll collapse that, is the theory, so that when you repressurize, it'll just blow open. Otherwise the sand could get inside here and potentially plug it, and that would be a bad thing. So I've got all six nozzles set up. Let's see if I can install this thing by myself. Oh, by the way, all these fittings are just pressure fit right now. Nothing's glued. Well, got it in. As you can see, the thrust is going to jam it in place. So it doesn't have to be secured in any way in theory. We pulled out if needed. And we'll see how much of a mess I've made of this thing. I can put another two jets, one there and one there, real easily. I may need to. I'm trying to keep it the minimum. But uh, we shall see what happens. Let me get the pump plumbed in and get some water in it. Okay, so we got everything plumbed and running. At idle, there's very little movement. A couple shovelfuls isn't much. I can't spare much more out of the pad right at the moment. But there's a little bit right there. Now there's a depression at that spot where the bottom of the tank is. I don't feel any. Just that one spot, a little bit in the middle, 
not entirely unexpected. Well, we'll have to go ahead and grind some more and agitate it and see what happens. Well, unfortunately, I grabbed the wrong, well, I bought, didn't grab, I got the wrong bushing for right here, so I kind of fabric cobbled a field expedient solution for testing. I'll just uh, tape that in place for the moment. So you can see the output of the mill goes directly into the agitation tank. And we'll see what happens. I've been having pretty good luck if I add just the right amount of moisture getting no dust. So we'll try it both dry and with moisture and see what happens. Okay, so here we got the impact mill feeding directly into the tank. By getting the right amount of moisture, there's virtually no dust. It's a little tricky. about the right amount of moisture there. By doing that, you can feed the tank directly from the mill. But anyhow, I'm going to let that build up a pile right there, and then I'm going to fire up the pump and see if it knocks the pile down. Meanwhile, i got other things to do. Well, I'm at about halfway to a full production, well, a half production charge. And I'm starting to get a decent pile there. What I'm trying to do is create a uh, kind of a mess, so to speak, with a pile of material so that when I turn on the pump, I'll get a good idea of just how well it will uh, stir things up. I'm just kind of put these on top to create a little bit more dead space now. For full production, the plan is to put a submersible pump in there and then we'll uh, have a canvas filter fabric type top over top of this to uh, keep the dust even less. And this is what I call a miner's abacus. We used to do this when I was underground, but we'd usually use uh, blasting lead wire. <laughs> and each bucket I'm putting in here is about 20 pounds of, of ore. That's about the right size to throw on the feeder. So one, two, three, four, 100, one, two, three, four, 200, one, two, three, so I'm up at a little bit, you know, about 260 pounds roughly. Had to stop to refuel and uh, you can see there's still plenty of room in there. Theoretically we should be able to do about a thousand pounds. This would be the slurry level at a thousand pounds of rock at a two to one ratio. This is the amount of solution you'd pre-fill to if you're going to do a thousand pound load. You're going to fill it to there and then you just grind up a thousand pounds of rock. Notice how little difference there is there. It's pretty hilarious. But anyhow, um, just taking a quick break. I'm going to make some lunch here and then fire this thing up. Get another, I still got liquid gas there. Um, so I got another 250 pounds to do a half charge, and I got another 100 pounds to grind up to do another one of those. This is the uh, slimes <laughs> settling pond. Boy, that that last grind of rock didn't have hardly any sand. I may have to figure out what's causing that. I mean, it's, it's nice to have real fine material, but it won't percolate. So there's negatives to it, too. So I'm not sure what I can do, because all these slimes have got gold still trapped in the 
liquid in them. So I may have to see what I can do to get a little bit of a coarser grind. We shall see. Okay, back when I get this thing loaded, fire up the pump. Well, things uh, rarely go according to plan. Uh, this used to be like that. I'm guessing the heating from the welding affected the metallurgy of the shaft. And right there at this end, it just, due to unbalance or whatever, a little micro flexing over time took that out. So, I'm not sure what the easiest way to fix that is. I'm thinking maybe take it to a machine shop and just have them drill that out, stick a shaft in there to about there, and then just plug weld the end as the connection. That way the shaft itself has no uh, negative um, metallurgy. It's all very homogeneous, especially at this end where all the strain is. Anyhow. So here's our... Got 260 pounds. And there's the pile. So, let's uh, rattle up the pump and see what happens.
definitely knock down that pile there. like this two inch throttleable pump. We shall see. Okay. Well that's it for the experiments today. Now it's time to clean up the tools. Looks like it will work. Although I'll probably need to put a couple more jets in and make sure I get a good sized pump. That's why I wanted to test it. Okay, so that's the end of the, the ore for today, and uh, as you can see, the slurry that I dumped this morning is already mostly soaked in. Let me see how much I got here at the other end. Ugh. scale on that bucket <laughs> so that I can see how much. Yeah. Oh. And I got plenty of solution in buckets for resin testing. Which it looks like that's what I'm gonna be doing for a bit. Okay. Well, from the uh, Impact Mill Graveyard near Helena, Montana, uh, this is Keith Bowen signing off for the day. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.